My name is Teacher Jack, and today we're going to be looking at a writing exercise. But first, I want to wish you a happy Valentine's Day. I hope it was lovely, because today we're going to look at the best kind of story to write, a love story. So for this lesson, all you're going to need is a few sheets of paper and a pencil. The goals for this lesson is we're going to use an existing story as a starting point. We're going to learn how to develop character and setting using mind maps. And we're going to use those mind maps for character and setting to create action in the story. Uh, but what story are we going to use? Well, it's a very old story uh, that's perfect for Valentine's Day. It is The Owl and the Pussycat. So The Owl and the Pussycat is a poem by Edward Lear about these two characters, The Owl and the Pussycat, who are in love. And in the story, they sail across the sea and then they get married and then they dance all night. Now, if you haven't read this story, uh, I have it here. So if you like, um, you can pause the video now uh, and read the story. Uh, otherwise, you can continue watching. So we have our story here. But today, the writing exercise is about how the owl and the pussycat first met. And the start of the story, once upon a time, Owl sailed alone to Cat City in his pea green boat. So pause the video and write this line at the top of one sheet of paper. So if you've done that, we can move on. There are three things that every good story needs. We need good characters, we need a good setting, and we need action. We need things to happen in the story. Now, we have our characters. Who are they? The owl and the pussycat. We have our setting. That's Cat City. And what we need to do is we need to develop the characters and the setting. So we're going to start with the characters first. So here we have Owl and Pussycat. Now let's think, what do we know about these characters already? Let's look back at the poem. So I would like you to pause the video after I finish speaking and see what you can find out about uh, the Owl and the pussycat. And we need to answer these questions down here. We need to answer who are they? What can they do? What do they like? What do they not like? Are they good at something? Are they bad at something? So I'd like you to pause the video and just skim the poem and write down any character traits you can find about the owl and the pussycat. So if you're finished, we can move on. Now, this was all that I found. So with the owl, I found out that he plays the guitar. He's a musician. And that uh, he sails his pea green boat. So he's a sailor. And the pussycat, I didn't really find much about her. I don't know who she is. I don't know what she likes, what she dislikes. Now, I don't think this is enough for our story. So what we need to do now is we need to develop our characters. We need to make them more interesting. And for that, we're going to use mind maps. So let's start with the owl. So every character needs something they do, something they're good at, something they're bad at, something they like, and something they want or need. So what we're going to do is I want you to get a sheet of paper. I want you to draw a circle in the middle, like on the screen. Um, and then we're going to answer these questions. So let's have a look at the first one. 
something they do. Well, we already have that, musician and sailor. Okay, so something they do, tick. Now let's think something they are good at. So uh, we could say that the owl is good at playing music and he's good at sailing, but we already have that here. So let's think of something else. What else could our owl be good at? Now, it could be that he's very strong or he's brave or he's smart or he's kind. I think for my owl, and yours could be different, for my owl, I think I'm going to make him smart. So he's very clever. So something he's good at. Now, every character needs something they're good at and something they're bad at. That's how we make interesting characters. Let's think of some uh, bad qualities. So he could be mean. He could be lazy. Mm. Or he could be very nervous. Yeah? I think I'm going to make my owl nervous. So he could get easily scared, yeah? He could panic a lot. Uh, so that's something they're bad at. Now let's think of something that they like. So this could be anything. Your owl could like delicious food, or he could like classical music, or he could like watching films. I think I'm gonna make my owl like books. Likes books because we have that he's smart so i think it makes sense that he likes books and the last thing so we have that the last thing is something they want or need now this one is important a character needs to want something that they don't have yet or they need to want to do more of something that they're already doing so it could be anything uh, our owl could want to learn more about the world. He could want to climb a mountain. He could want to make uh, more money. He could want to find love, something that he doesn't have. So I'm gonna have my owl wants to learn. Because he's smart and because he likes books, I think this makes sense. So. Now we have our owl. Now, is your owl going to be the same as mine? No, it can be completely different. This is just my version. So let me clear this and move on. So we have our owl. And what I want you to do when you're finished is I want you to pause the video and then draw a picture of your new owl in the circle. So look, mine, because he's smart and he likes books, he's holding books. He's got a pair of glasses on. And because he's nervous, I've drawn him panicking. Okay, I think this is a much more interesting character than the one we had first. Now, before we move on to the pussycat, let's try and write the first sentence of our story. So we remember the first sentence. Once upon a time, Al sailed alone to Cat City in his pea green boat. Now, what we need to do is we need to use our traits to think of why he's going to Cat City. So what could my owl want to go to Cat City for? Uh, he's smart, he likes books, he wants to learn. I think I'm gonna make him visit the Great Cat Library, yeah? Lots of books he wants to learn. I think this makes sense. So write down on your paper the reason why your owl is going to Cat City. And when you're finished, we're going to move on to Pussycat. Now with Pussycat, I mean, I didn't find anything in the poem that describes who Pussycat is. Um, and again, like with the owl, we choose something that they do, something they're good at, something they're bad at, something they like, and something they want or need. So I'd like you to do this by yourself. So pause the video and see if you can use your mind map to answer these questions on the left.
So this is my version of Pussycat. My version of Pussycat is a hero. They like to save people from danger. They're also a librarian. They work in a library. Being a hero, I've made her brave. But being brave, I've also made her reckless. So she gets into danger sometimes. Um, for her likes, I put that she likes fish because she's a cat and all cats like fish. And for her want, I've put that she wants to travel. So let's have a look at the first sentence of our story for Pussycat. So I've written here, Pussycat was also in Cat City where she worked at the Great Cat Library, but she was secretly a hero and saved people from danger. So we're using the brave and the hero traits to make our character more interesting. But we're missing one thing here. We have the traits, but what about her want? Can you think of a reason using her character traits, reckless, brave? Can you think of a reason as to why Pussycat wants to travel. Let's have a look. This is my version. I've put, being a hero was a hard life and she wanted to leave so she could relax. So here we've used our traits to find out why somebody wants to do something. Now, again, this is just my version of Pussycat. Yours, based on the traits that you've written down, can want anything else for any reason. So we have Owl and Pussycat. Now, what we need to do when we finished our mind maps for Pussycat and our mind maps for the Owl is we need to look and see if we can make connections. So, for example, Pussycat is a hero and she's brave. An owl is nervous. So we've got a connection here. Do you think that a nervous character like Owl would want to meet a brave hero? Why would they want to meet a brave hero? Let's have a look at something else. She wants to travel. And he is a sailor. What do you think would happen when they meet? What would they talk about? Let's have a look at another one and I'll clear the board so it's a bit clearer. Owl wants to learn and he likes books. What do you think he would feel when he met Pussycat, who's a librarian? And the last one, uh, we've got that Pussycat likes fish. Um, but does this connect to anything on Owl's side? I don't think so. But we do know that Owl is a sailor. So how about we change this and make it so that Pussycat likes boats? Ah, now we have another connection. Excellent. OK, now we need to think of something else. We have our characters. Let's move on to our settings. Now, what do we know about Cat City? Nothing. I mean, we know that uh, cats live there. And we also know that the Great Cat Library is in Cat City. But look, we need to find some more traits. Before we start coming up with ideas, let's involve our characters. So, Pussycat is a hero and she's brave. So let's make Cat City dangerous. Mm. Uh, she also wants to travel. So let's think of a reason why Pussycat hasn't traveled away from Cat City. Maybe Cat City floats on the sea. Mm. Uh, now we have uh, a nervous character. 
Uh, we already have the great cat library. That's good for Al being smart and wanting to learn and liking books. But what, how can we make a nervous character more interesting in the setting? Well, very simply, we can make Cat City very big. I think that would make Al even more nervous going to a big city like that. So we have connections. We have Cat City. Cat City was famous for the great cat library and for being a city that floated far out to sea. Only people with boats could reach it, but that meant pirates and pirates were dangerous. Ah, so now we know why it's dangerous. So when you write your first sentence for Cat City, make sure that you mention all the things you've written down in your mind map. So now we have characters and setting. And now we need the action of the story. And we do this by making connections. So let's think. What would happen when a nervous character goes to a big, dangerous city full of pirates? Let's have a look. Al was trying to find the library, but Cat City was so big that he got lost. And because he knew there were pirates in Cat City and they were very dangerous, he got scared and tried to hide. So we have action of the story. We've put our character into a setting and we've seen what happens. But now the question is, what do we do next? We can look at our traits and decide what are we going to bring in? What are we going to use to create more action? Um, we could bring in the fact that he's a musician. Maybe after he hides, he starts to play a song. Uh, we could use the fact that he's smart. Maybe when he hides, he has a think and he looks at a map and he goes, ah, I know where to go. What else could we use to make more action in the story? We could maybe use a trait that we've already referenced and make more of it. Let's see what happens next. So when Al tried to hide, he found himself in a dark alleyway surrounded by big, scary looking pirate cats. Ah, so what we've done in this version is we've used the pirates and we've made more of it. We've brought the pirates into the story to make more action. And the reason I brought the pirates in again is because we need to get Pussycat into the story. You know, we need her to have a reason to appear. So let's think what could happen next? How can we use? Pussycat's traits to bring her into the story. Let's have a look at what happens next. So we already know the first three lines. Pussycat's in Cat City. She works at the library. She's a secret hero. Let's read the bit after. All of a sudden, she heard a scream from an alleyway nearby. She grabbed her hero cape, hat and sword and ran in the direction of the sound. So what we've done is we've used Al's traits to put him in a situation. He's nervous, he's hiding. We've used the city's traits, the danger, the pirates, to make that scene more interesting. And we've used Pussycat's traits, being a hero, being brave, helping people, to give her a reason to come into the action. So to wrap up today's lesson, this is how we write a new story based off something that already exists. First of all, we find our characters and our setting. We use mind maps to give the characters and the setting interesting traits. And then we see how these traits from the characters and the setting connect and interact with each other. And then we use those interactions to find out what kind of action 
can happen in the story. So, what kind of characters will your owl and pussycat be? What kind of city will your cat city be? And lastly, how will they meet and fall in love? And remember, if you are doing this lesson and you find yourself stuck and you don't know what to do next, first, look at your traits to see if there are more connections you can make. And if there are no more connections, then add more traits. So good luck writing your story. Uh, happy Valentine's Day and happy writing. Thank you very much. And I hope you come and join me on one of my Writing Warriors courses or on any other course at the Online English Teacher. We'd be very happy to have you. Okay, thank you for watching and bye-bye.